All right, so going into chapter three, we are gonna pick up some of the threads from last quarter talking about inflammation and tissue repair. So in patho, we talked about inflammation and healing, and um, we're still talking about that. Um, but what we're gonna add on this quarter, we're gonna add another layer. And the layer is how do we treat inflammatory conditions? So this course is a lot about adding to your toolbox, making sure that you have the tools to um, affect people's conditions. So with therapists, when they're treating inflammation um, in rehabilitation and physical therapy, um, we're treating inflammatory conditions most of the time that result from trauma or surgical procedures, sometimes from delayed or problematic healing. And the tools in our toolkit that we're using to treat those things um, are physical agents, which this class focuses on, um, therapeutic exercises, which is sort of our wheelhouse in physical therapy, and manual techniques. And we're going to learn some manual techniques in this class as well. So the um, learning objectives for this section, and I'm gonna split it up into some shorter lectures. Um, I would like you to be able to describe three key features of each phase of tissue repair. So the three phases we're gonna talk about are inflammation, proliferation, and maturation, also known as acute, subacute, and return to function or chronic. Um, we, I would like you to be able to associate um, those three stages of tissue repair with their clinical signs and general PT interventions. And we'll definitely talk more about that um, next week as well. So when somebody walks into the clinic, they don't have a sign around their neck that says, I'm in the acute phase, I'm in the inflammation phase. Um, but we, do, we can read the clinical signs um, to figure out what stage they're in and then choose the interventions that are going to um, be the best for helping them get through the phases of inflammation. So um, I would like you to be able to describe the importance and effects of macrophages in healing tissue. Um, I would like you to be able to describe the local and systemic issues that may um, delay or influence healing and um, describe the healing abilities of different tissue types and the factors affecting the healing of each. So we'll discuss that over the next few short lectures. So um, on page 26, I think in the book um, is this chart um, and it, it's basically a flow chart for the phases of inflammation and healing. So um, the, the headings, the blue, purple and peach colored headings are inflammation phase, proliferation phase and maturation phase. Um, the phases can vary in time and um, overlap. So um, there's, there's another chart that kind of shows that. But this, I like this chart on page 26 because it shows the different um, phases, the different features of each phase. So in the acute or in inflammation phase, um, the body is preparing the wound for healing. So there's a lot of focus sometimes on anti-inflammatory medications or anti-inflammatories. Um, but the, the inflammation phase, that initial phase has to happen to prepare the wound for healing. And so the range is possibly days one to six. So that doesn't mean that it's always six days, but it happens in that time frame. So initially there is um, immediate vasoconstriction to sort of seal off the area where the injury is. Um, and then followed by vasodilation and opening of the capillary beds. Um, and that allows the um, blood cells, the leukocytes and the um, platelets to come in. The platelets are gonna start with clot formation and the leukocytes are gonna start with phagocytosis. In the next phase, the proliferation phase or the subacute phase, um, the body begins to rebuild damaged structures and strengthen the wound. So that's days three to 20 approximately. So the first um, feature of the proliferation phase is epithelialization where um, adjacent cells migrate to the wound to help cover it. So it's basically the intact skin on either side of it. Um, intact skin cells are going to migrate to the center of the wound to start to cover it up. 
Um, then we're gonna, the fibroblasts are gonna come in, they're gonna produce collagen to help strengthen the wound. Uh, the wound is then gonna contract and it's gonna develop new capillary beds. So that's the neovascularization. And we'll talk about the um, clinical signs that we associate with each of those. Uh, maturation phase, there's more, uh, there's a balance between collagen synthesis and collagen lysis. So the weak collagen that was originally set up in the proliferation phase is going to um, break down and be replaced by stronger collagen. And the fibers are gonna be oriented to a more functional orientation. And eventually we end up with a healed injury. And there are clinical signs that you can see that um, show you that you're in the maturation phase. So a maturation phase can start as early as day nine and, and proceed for a year or more. So um, in the next slide, this is also from the book and it shows how the phases can kind of overlap a little bit. Um, so it's not like there's, there are some hallmark signs that you can um, tell you're moving from one phase to the other or that you're for sure in a certain phase. Um, and we'll talk about it. So the inflammation phase, um, begins when the normal physiology of tissue is altered somehow. Disease, trauma, infiltration of foreign cells. Um, inflammation is an attempt to um, destroy foreign bodies or dilute them or isolate the cells or agents that might be at fault. So if your um, first line of defense, your skin is broken, um, bacteria can get in. And so that immediate vasoconstriction to sort of seal off the area um, is the first attempt to um, isolate the cells that are damaged. Um, inflammation is necessary for healing. It can become inappropriate um, in something like an autoimmune disease um, or where you have um, excessive scarring or other damage. Um, the uh, Latin word for inflammation means to set on fire. The cardinal signs, and these are things that we can see in the clinic, heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. So the redness and swelling are caused by the vascular response. So there are three parts of the inflammation phase, the vascular response, the hemostatic response, and the immune response. So um, the vascular response is swelling and redness it's mediated by chemical mediators, histamines, kinins, and prostaglandins. In the text, um, there's a whole list of a bunch of different chemical mediators, and I certainly don't expect you to memorize those, but just in general, um, a lot of the um, over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs target prostaglandins um, and histamines. So um, they're kind of targeting that vascular response. We want it to happen, but we don't want it to take over. Um, the hemostatic response stops bleeding. So that's our platelets coming in and starting to seal off the wound, starting clot formation. Um, the immune response activates neutrophils and other infection fighting cells and the complement system in um, the immune system. The neutrophils are um, phagocytes, they do, they come in first and sort of start cleaning things up. And then by the time the um, macrophages get there, switching from neutrophils to macrophages is kind of one of the um, signs that you've moved into the proliferation phase. Of course, you can't detect that in the clinic. You can't, you can't tell that someone's changed from neutrophils to infection fighting to um, macrophages for infection fighting. Um, but you can detect heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. So a lot of times the, um, the heat and redness are because of the extra blood from the vasodilation and the opening of capillary beds. And the swelling, in, the swelling is from the fluid going into the interstitial space and swelling can cause some pain. And then the um, chemical mediators can cause pain by activating the um, sensitive nerve endings that are going to um, react to those. So here's our vascular response where the um, white blood cells are going out through the dilated capillaries and they're um, going out into the interstitial space to take care of things, clean things up. 
and they follow the um, chemo attractant chemicals that are coming from the injured cells. So that's their little trail that they have to follow to get in. Um, vascu vascular permeability increases, um, the capillary beds open up, that's giving us our, um, our redness. And um, when the capillary beds open, it allows fluid to go into the interstitial space and that gives us our swelling. So there are lots of different um, intravascular cells, um, connective tissue, and other cells involved in the inflammatory response. So that's just sort of a collection of them. Like, wow, look at all these guys. So all the white blood cells, platelets, um, mast cells, which are producing histamines, fibroblasts are producing collagen, macrophages are cleaning up. Um, all the elastin and collagen and proteoglycans um, fibers are released by the fibroblast. And so um, there's a lot going on. It's a complicated process. And there's the macrophage eating its um, foreign matter, getting it out of the way. So in the proliferation phase, um, the really function of the proliferation phase is to cover the wound and strengthen the injury site. And so it involves those four processes, epithelialization, where the um, skin cells migrate to the area. Um, and they migrate to the area and then they, once they touch each other, they stop. So it's a pretty weak um, covering, um, but it's enough. And then collagen production by the fibroblast produces what we call granulation tissue. And um, it, initially it's collagen type three, and we'll talk about the different types of collagen a bit. Type three collagen is the weaker, um, less organized type of collagen. And it's what is initially put down. So I always say that collagen is like the spackle of our bodies and we fill the holes with it. And then later in the maturation phase, we're gonna sand it down, make it look pretty, maybe paint. You know, nobody will ever know there was a hole there. And so then um, after the collagen is produced, then we get wound contraction where the wound um, pulls together and the formation of new blood vessels um, is what is the clinical sign that we see that granulation tissue is forming. So when you first look at a new scar, um, I see a lot of new surgical scars. Um, they, the new tissue in the middle is um, pink and it's pink because of that angiogenesis, the formation of the new blood vessels. And so we can tell when they have granulation tissue that they've moved into the proliferation phase and they probably have less heat, less redness, less swelling. But as you know, the phases can overlap so you can still have heat and redness and swelling in the proliferation phase. Not as much though. So this is the little graphic from the um, text with the epithelialization. Um, the cells um, kind of detach from the basement membrane they migrate um, to pull the center of the wound closer together. This works a lot better with a closely approximated wound. If you recall from pathophysiology, the healing by primary intention and secondary intention, when you have a wound whose edges are closely approximated, um, this is gonna happen more easily. When the two sides meet, the, cell, the cells stop migrating and then the basal cells start to differentiate and proliferate. So that's our epithelialization in the proliferation phase. When um, our trochocollagen is our sort of precursor um, for collagen and basically it um, coils all together to form these collagen fibers that are gonna fill in and eventually become our mature scar tissue. Um, the wound contracts um, by the picture frame method. So basically it pulls in from the ends and the sides. So it's sort of like when you do the pinch shrink or um, pinch um, on your um, touch screen, you pull things together. That's how the picture frame um, wound contraction happens. So I always think about um, total knee replacement scars because I see a lot of them and um, they pull in from the ends and they pull in from the sides. So that's how the wound is gonna to contract to, um, to form a closer, tighter knit amount of tissue basically. So um, in the next 
video, we will talk about the maturation phase and beyond.